Hi guys, the purpose of this video is to help you review for the Unit 9 test and it's going to correspond to a file that's under Modules, Instructional Materials, let me say that again, Modules, Instructional Materials, and it's called Unit 9 Study Guide Version 2. The reason it's called version 2 is I actually created this one uh, once I went through the test just to make sure that you guys were familiar with the format that you were expected to enter your answers and that that wouldn't pose any issues for you in earning the maximum number of points. All right. So without further ado, we're going to start off with question number one. All right. So question number one gives you a right triangle, triangle ABC. And it looks something like this. All right, there's a right angle. There's seven, five, B, A, and C. All right. Now the first thing they ask you to do is find BC. Okay, so let's think about the tools we have at our disposal. If I know two sides of a right triangle, what theorem can I use to find the third? The Pythagorean theorem. All right. So for part A, I would simply do a squared plus B squared equals C squared. That means 7 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. Let's do some math here. So 49 plus 25 equals c squared. Uh, let's hope that I can add correctly. I believe that that's 74 all right, equals c squared. And so I can leave it as rod 74 equals c. Of course, on the test, they may ask you to actually like round it to the nearest whole number or the nearest tenth or something like that. And so if you actually wanted to do that, you could put in 74 and hit the square root key and you get like 8.6. All right. So just be mindful. Make sure that you read the directions for each question. Some of them will ask you to leave it to the nearest tenth, others to the nearest whole number. Just make sure you read what they ask for. Okay. All right. So we've got that this right over here is rad 74. So far, so good. All right. Now they want to know what's the measure of angle B. Okay. So now they're asking us to do this. All right. They're asking us to find an angle. To find an angle, do I use regular trig or do I use inverse trig? I'm going to say we use inverse trig, right? Regular trig is only if we're trying to find a sign and we already know the angle. Okay. So I'm going to ignore this rad 74 just for the time being, because I don't know about you guys. I just don't want to deal with radicals in this question. All right. So I'm just going to ignore it. Let's take a look at what we got. This is opposite and this is adjacent. So what's the only ratio that I can use for opposite and adjacent? Well, opposite and adjacent, that would be the tangent ratio, right? Okay, so I need to figure out uh, tan of, I don't know, some unknown angle, so I'll call that x equals five over seven. Now in order to actually find the angle measure, what I'm gonna have to do is use the inverse. How do I do that exactly? Let's go through it step by step on the calculator. I'm going to do 5 divided by 7. Hit equals. I'm going to get like 0.714 or something. Then I'm going to hit my second button and hit the 10 key. And I'm going to get around 35.5. All right. So this angle right here would end up being 35.5. And I want you guys to notice something. Do you realize that once I find that angle, now I can just use triangle sum theorem then in order to be able to find C. How do, let me explain that a little bit further. What do I know that the three angles in a triangle add up to? They have to add up to 180, right? So if I have 90 and 35.5, all I got to do is subtract those from 180. So you would do 180 minus 90 minus 35.5. And now we get that this angle over here is about 54.5. All right. So far, so good. Okay. Now they want me to find what's tan C and what's tangent of B. Well, here's what they're really asking us to do, right? The tangent is defined as the opposite over adjacent. So in this case, this angle over here, uh, opposite is 7, adjacent is 5. So all I have to do is tan C equals 7 over 5. Bam. Done. Period. End of story. All right. It actually is that simple. Similarly, for part E, if they want to know the tan of B, well, that's going to be the opposite over the adjacent. And so tan B equals 5 over 7. All right. 
Now, what do you have to make sure that you watch out for on the unit test? On the unit test, they, they're going to specifically ask you to reduce the fraction. These fractions are actually really nice because they're already reduced into simplest form, right? There's no GCF for 5 and 7 apart from 1. If you had, by contrast, something like 6 over 8, you would have to reduce that fraction down to 3 over 4 to get the correct answer. So you've been warned. If you do not reduce your fraction, I will not be giving you credit and I will not go back in the computer and adjust those points. So please, please, please make sure you guys read the instructions carefully. All right. Okay, moving right along. Let's take a look at part F. Now they want to know what's the sine of C. Now sine is defined as opposite over hypotenuse, right? So I know over here, I actually, <laughs> I actually have uh, that this over here is um, 7, that's the opposite, and I know the hypotenuse is rad 74, so I can actually just do 7 over rad 74 to find the sine of C. Similarly, for the cosine, because this is the adjacent and that's the hypotenuse, I would just do 5 over rad 74. And of course, you could get those to be decimals, but my broader point is this. As long as you use Pythagorean theorem to find the unknown sign at first, and you use inverse trig once in order to figure out one of the unknown angles, everything else can be done pretty much using triangle sum theorem or just by looking at the figure and labeling opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay? All right. Now, let's take a look at a few of the word problems. All right, when I say word problems, they're not really going to be all that bad, but you guys need to know that the answer alone is not going to be the majority of the points. The majority of the points are actually going to be in setting up the correct equation. How exactly does this work and how, do we, how are we expected to do that? Let's go through. So let's look at question two. American Airlines Flight 225 is flying at an altitude of 18,000 feet. Okay. So, there's my plane. Ay, 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 what a horrible plane, right? Okay, and so I know that it's uh, flying at a height of 18,000. So I'm just going to write that over here. That's how high it is. And it says that it spots an island below. Okay, so here's, <laughs> here's like a little island at an angle of depression, right? That means from the sky going downward. Of 42 degrees and what do they want to know they want to know the horizontal distance from the pilot to the island horizontal not diagonal in this case horizontal so I'm gonna call this X okay if you're looking at the study guide right now do you guys see how there are four blanks that have to be filled in in the first blank you're gonna put the abbreviation for the trig function you would use because I have opposite and I have adjacent, uh, the only one that would work is tangent. So here's what I put in the first blank. I would write tan. That's how you would get your points for that part. Then what comes next is tan of what? 42 would come in the second blank. In the third blank, well, I'm doing opposite over adjacent, right? So I would have 18,000 over x. So right there, if you guys can get that, that's going to give you the majority of problems, or problems, the majority of points for this problem. The answer is not actually worth all that much. The setup is what we're really going for here, all right? So using our algebra trick, if I have this variable on the bottom, I can switch it with this tan 42, and so I get x is 18,000 over tan 42. I'm actually going to do this the long way. I know some of you guys prefer to do this in one step, and if you know how to do that with your calculator, that's perfectly fine with me. All right, but I, like I said, I just I don't want to run the risk of getting something super wrong. It's over 0 0.9004. All right, so I will do 18,000. All right, 0 0.9004, and I get around 19,991. All right, so x is around 19,000. 991 feet. I, I, did I say feet? No, I guess I meant. No, actually, I just I did mean feet. Yeah, because that units were feet. I'm so sorry. Miles would be very interesting because that'd be like a in space somewhere. Let me just clarify something. Uh, some of you guys are probably wondering where the heck did I get this decimal? I put 42 in the calculator and I hit tan. All right, that's how I got that. 
Let's try one more of these just to make sure that you guys have the hang of it, okay? Let's try question number three. All right, our standard ladder problem. So let's go through that. By the way, notice how in the past problem, as my variable, what letter did I choose? I chose X. So as a convention, just to make life easier on you and so I don't have to go in and regrade all your tests, please, 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 please make sure that you use X for whatever's your unknown, okay? So number three, it says I've got a ladder and it says it's 20 feet long and it's placed against a 15 foot tall building, okay? So far so good. And they wanna know the angle of elevation that's right here at the bottom that it makes with the ground. All right, step one, let's set up our equation. This is opposite and this is hypotenuse, so the only ratio that's gonna work is my sine ratio. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say sine x equals 15 over 20. Guys, this is important. Blank one, blank two, blank three, blank four. Do not simplify, do not change the variables, do not use capital letters, don't use degree symbols. Exactly like this, so we can make sure that it grades you the correct way the first time so you guys can get your points, all right? Now with that being said, I actually know the sine ratio, but I'm trying to find an angle. So if I'm trying to find an angle, do I use regular trigonometry or inverse? Hmm, angle, inverse trick. So let's walk through it together. I'm going to do 15 divided by 20, hit equals, second, and then hit the sine key, and I get 48.6. All right, so x is around 48.6 degrees. Bear in mind, this particular problem, I might ask you to do the nearest tenth. On the test, it might vary. Some versions might ask you for the nearest tenth, others to the nearest hundredth. If you guys don't read the question correctly and you don't give the correct rounding, I will not go back and give you points. Let me say that again. I expect each one of you to read the question. If the question asks you to round to the nearest tenth, you must round to the nearest tenth. That means one decimal place. If they ask you to the nearest hundredth, that means two decimal places. Okay, but I hold you responsible for reading the question, okay? All right, question four. Um, this one is one that we've covered briefly, all right? You may remember it from before the break. Um, it's not going to be huge on your test. Regular, you guys will probably see something more like A, whereas honors, you guys will see something closer to question B. But at the same time, it's very easy. The basic idea is this. The sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. What the heck does that mean? Basically, it means that the two angles that you see, if you have sine on one side and cosine on the other, they got to add up to 90. Let me say that again. The two angles have to add up to 90. So for part A, 18 plus what gives me 90? <laughs> well, let's do some subtraction, shall we? All right, so that would be 72. Bam, done. For part B, it turns into a multi-step equation, right, from combining like terms. The two parentheses have got to sum up to give me 90. So 4x plus 2 plus x plus 13 equals 90. So let's combine some like terms. 5x plus 15 equals 90. Inverse operations to get rid of the 15. So 5x equals 75, and that means x equals 15. All right, so again, pretty easy, and it's a fair number of points for a relatively simple question. So when you're going through the test, you may not want to do the word problems first. You may want to actually focus on something like that that's a little bit easier. All right, all righty. Next up, let's take a look at our special right triangles. Regular, on your test, this is going to be very minimal if it even shows up at all. So if you guys had trouble with this, don't worry too much about it. Honors, however, you guys are expected to know this, and it will be multiple questions on your exam. So please, please, please make sure you watch very closely what we're about to do for questions five and six. All right. Number five, they give me this weird hybrid figure. All right, I've got a 45, 45, 90. So let me actually write that in, 45. 
And then I've got a, uh, meh. Sorry, I know, I know my triangles are not the best, and I apologize for that. All right, x and 4. All right, so which triangle do we always start with? We start with the one where we actually know a side, and that would be the 30, 60, 90. Now, the 4 is the small, because it's across from the 30-degree angle, right? So to get from small to middle, I would just multiply by rad 3. So in this case, x would just be 4 rad 3. So far, so good. What about the uh, shared side here? This is the hypotenuse of the 30, 60, 90. How do I get from a small to the hypotenuse? I just multiply by 2. Bam. Done. So the middle's 8. That's not actually what they asked for, though. They asked for y. They asked for the leg. Now, those of you guys who remember your 45, 45, 90, here was the relationship. To get from the small to the hypotenuse, I had to multiply by rad 2. What if I'm going the opposite direction? What, do, what would I do instead of multiplying by rad 2? What's the opposite of multiplying by rad 2? Anyone? Divide by rad 2. So I'm going to do 8 over rad 2. And then for those of you guys who came to office hours, all right, I emphasize this heavily, you're going to be asked to rationalize. What that means is you're going to have to multiply both top and bottom by the radical. So that's going to give me 8 rad 2 over what? Let me actually show all the work there. 8 rad 2 over rad 4. What is rad 4? Rad 4 is just 2. So I have 8 rad 2 over 2. And once 8 divided by 2, that would give me 4 rad 2. All right. So the strategy that I would advise, it comes in two parts. Step one, find all the sides of the triangle where you actually have information about a side. Okay. Step two, Make sure that you have a shared side that you know the value of, and then use that to find the sides of the other triangle. All right. The same thing applies for question number six. So let's have a little look at question number six, okay? All right, number six, by the way, is actually a, uh, I think it's an old SAT question which is, again, a good justification for actually learning this in the first place, because even if you're not necessarily going to, you know, want to go on to Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc or any of that good stuff, uh, you still will want to know this information, all right, because it will get you potentially scholarship money on the SAT and PSAT. All right, let's find all our unknown lengths, shall we? Okay, if it's a 45, 45, 90, that means it's isosceles. That means that two sides are the same. So if this leg's 3 rad 2, then this one is also 3 rad 2. Bam. Now to get from a leg to a hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90, the relationship is multiply by rad 2. So I'm going to take 3 rad 2 and multiply by rad 2. What is 3 rad 2 times rad 2? Hmm. Well, rad 2 times rad 2 is rad 4. So this is 3 rad 4. But what is rad 4? 2. And 3 times 2 is 6. Okay? All right. So far, so good. Let's approach the other one. So they gave me the small because it's across from the 30. So to get from the small, which is right here, the 3 rad 2, to the hypotenuse, I would multiply by 2. That gives me 6 rad 2. And to get from small to the middle leg, I multiply by rad 3. So let me show that work out because a lot of you guys are not very strong with radicals at all. 3 rad 2, that's the original, times rad 3. Rad 2 times rad 3 is rad 6. So this would just be 3 rad 6. All right? Again, a little bit more complicated for regular, right? You guys are not going to be responsible for questions as complex as these on your test. Uh, honors, it will be on your test, and you will be able to perform question with questions like these. All right? And you will be asked to rationalize denominators where appropriate. Last but not least, question seven, this is what I call the heart of trigonometry. As in, questions like these are going to comprise the majority of the questions on your regular exam, and on the honors test, there are going to be a few, all right? So you really, really want to make sure you know how to label appropriately opposite adjacent hypotenuse, and you also want to make sure that you're able to apply it by solving for a side, all right? So let's take a look at this example. Uh, 
Yikes, that is most certainly not a sign. So let's try that one more time. There we go. All right. Well, it's better than nothing, right? So there's 50. There's 6. And if I have an unknown, what should I call it? What variable do I use? X. All right. All right, let's do some labeling. Uh, this is across from the 50. So that's going to be my opposite, right? Okay. Um, this right here is across from the right angle, so that's going to be my hypotenuse. All right, so one question they're going to ask you guys in your test is to actually enter the equation that you could use to solve this. Here's how I would do that. I would have four blanks, and here's what I would write. Sine, abbreviate it as sin, 50 equals, and then I have two more blanks, 6 over x. That right there would get me the vast majority of points available for that question. So even if you get the wrong answer, it's not a huge deal. All right. Now our algebraic trick here, because x is on the bottom, is I would switch the places of the sine 50 and the x, and so I got x equals 6 over sine 50. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way in my calculator, right? I'm going to put in 50, hit the sine key, so I've got 6 over 0 0.7660 four, 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 blah, blah, blah. Why am I keeping all those decimals? Just so Canvas doesn't mark me wrong. All right, that's that's the, the main reason. And so I get around, X is around 7.8-ish. All right, so that was a review of the key concepts that you guys need to be aware of for the Unit 9 test. I also made sure to go over exactly how I expect the answers inputted. For a question that requires an equation where I actually have a blank, 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 this is the format that I expect you to answer it in, okay? Abbreviate the trigonometric ratios with SIN, COS, and TAN. Use X for an unknown, and that will get you guys the majority of your points on the exam, okay? I hope that helps. Uh, best of luck to all of you.